Lando Norris is rapid, intelligent and decisive when he races and seems to be able to make any car go fast. But what was his driving style like when he was eight? And does it show signs of the driver he is now? Lando started karting when he was seven and competed in Coma Cadet Karting. But Lando actually wasn't much of a Formula One fan. He actually said he much preferred MotoGP and was a massive Valentino Rossi fan. As we all now know, he is. Lando went straight into national karting in the Super One Championship, but he took a couple of years to build up and develop before he was achieving top results. And Lando actually said himself he wasn't a success straight away. In my first like four years of karting, I won one race. But it made me a better driver. Over the next five years, Lando climbed through various championships and developed his signature calculated driving style. He won the CIK FIA European Championship and the International Super Cup before becoming the youngest karting world champion ever at just 14 years old. The British Open champion Lando Norris, who has got the pole position. He must be the youngest ever world champion in senior karting was a uh, yeah great but how did he do this well the first thing is that lando was quick having incredible natural feel and the ability to pick an overtaking move but more on that later watching lando's kart races you can see just how quick and consistent he is starting from pole and then managing the battle with other drivers in karting at this level it's super hard to break away so you have to choose your battles letting some overtakes go and only going to re-overtake when it makes the most sense otherwise you'll slow yourself down and other drivers drivers will get past you. And that is the thing that stands out the most. Lando really picks his moves, being incredibly calculated and then decisive when he finally goes for it. But what about his driving style? How he manipulates the carts and pulls together a lap time? Well, unfortunately, there aren't many on boards from his time karting, but there are newer ones of him getting back in a cart. And the first thing to know is one of the things I taught a lot of racing drivers. It's about how to be fast on track straight away. Just look at how he drives as he comes out of the pits for the first time. To him, the car is new, the conditions are new, and he has to go and learn what the cart and the track want. And he's super aggressive at the wheel, quite uncharacteristic for Lando, weaving and sliding the cart around. Now, yes, this does warm your tires, but a lot of the reason for doing this is to feel how much grip the car actually has, because up until this point, he doesn't have any idea. Then watch him get on the brakes. You can hear the car lock up slightly. And again, this is all to build feeling that Lando has, telling him how much grip the car has laterally and under braking. This means that he can get fast faster, using that information to give him better guesses on how to take the next corners. You extrapolate all of this information around the circuit. And once you have all of that feedback, you can build it together and paint a picture of the entire circuit and the limit very quickly. And you can see over the lap, he goes from being super aggressive to super smooth. And for Lando, that only takes a lap. Or some drivers, it might take them 10 to 15 laps to get up to speed. The great ones do it in less than two. Once he's up to speed, you can see the cart dancing underneath him. And that's how you tell if a driver is on the limit. If it's too smooth, you know they aren't quite there yet. It's the tiny micro corrections that tell me when a driver is right on the pace. Looking at the steering, you might think he's a little aggressive, but actually in a car, he's being pretty delicate and precise compared to many drivers. Then through the corner, he manages just the correct amount of the slide. In a car like this with a solid axle, there is no diff. So to hold maximum speed through a corner, you have to be sliding slightly. Whereas in a car with a diff, you see this a little bit less. Following Lando's world championship winning season, he moved up into cars and ran in the Ginetta Juniors. It's a championship for 14 to 17 year olds in small GT cars. And Lando was quick in them, finishing third in the championship while battling many drivers who were in their second or third or fourth years of car racing, which was seriously impressive. Just look at this podium shot. He looks tiny compared to the other drivers up there with him. He put together some incredible moves. Look at this one up the inside at Thruxton, which was a really unusual place to overtake at that track but also some aggressive moves. Just look at this one on Jamie Chadwick. The last ditch final lap lunge up the inside that didn't quite work out. Still, you can't fault him for trying it. In a car, that probably would have worked. Following that, Lando moved into single seaters, doing a season where he raced in various Formula 4 championships, winning the MSA Formula 4 Championship, which now we call British Formula 4. But this is where he really shone. His karting skills really translated to F4, meaning he was instantly quick, even more so in the wet. Lando was 
clearly a driver with incredible feel. One of those like Verstappen, Hamilton, Button, Raikkonen and loads of other drivers that seem to excel in difficult mixed conditions. Just look at this move around the outside at the Nürburgring GP track. He was always using slightly different lines to other drivers, experimenting to find out where the grip was, constantly driving the car right on the limit, coming from 8th to P2. And this is something that you see in Lando's driving still in Formula 1 today. He's trying lots of different lines in the rain. We often see him right on the inside of the curbs going into corners. Something that lots of other drivers just don't try. Anyway, back to this championship. The standard was super high. Racing drivers who were in their second or third season of F4. And in a pack of drivers of that standard, Lando's driving was seriously impressive. Again, look at the drivers he was competing with. He looks super young on the podium. Now, you can really see this in a race he had in Austria. But first we need to thank Brilliant.org for sponsoring this video. Brilliant is the best way to learn about maths, data science and computer science by not just reading but by doing. Brilliant has thousands of lessons from basics to advanced topics with new topics added every month. We love Brilliant here, it's the best way to get to grips with a new concept, something that you've always wanted to learn about. You've heard us speak about the classical mechanics course as it ties in amazingly with learning about Formula 1. But also check out some of the lessons from the YouTube channel Real Engineering to learn more about materials, rockets and sentry petal motion. Whatever your skill level, Brilliant customises content to fit your needs, allowing you to complete lessons at your own pace in bite-sized chunks. You can get started for free for 30 days and get 20% off by visiting brilliant.org forward slash driver61. Finally, thank you very much to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Now, look at this race in Austria. It sums Lando up. This was during his time in Formula Renault, similar to the F4 cars that we saw earlier. You can really see the Norris we see today and the attitude he drives the car with. He's super cool behind the wheel, not making silly moves or going for risky overtakes. He will follow when he needs to, be patient and then make the move. Look at this. After leading against De Forne for several laps, he gets over taken, but doesn't immediately make a move back past, knowing it will only slow them both down and drag them back into the pack. So, knowing they have two laps left, Lando settles in and follows De Forne, and analyzes where he is strongest and where to make a move on the final lap, which takes absolute confidence. Then, on the final lap, he pounces. Just look at this move up the inside of turn six, even putting a wheel on the grass. Now, I've analyzed a lot of drivers in this driving style series. Of course, you should subscribe for more. And normally we talk about how they like their car set up. Max likes a pointy front end, whereas Alonso likes a bit more understeer. But with Lando, it's harder. He's proven to be incredibly adaptable. During his Formula 3 years, he liked a bit of oversteer. Look at this. Here he is testing a Formula 3 car at Silverstone. He actually streamed it live on Twitch. What a legend. Anyway, here you can see what I mentioned earlier about working the car hard on the outlap to warm the tires and feel the grip out of the car. Then he smoothens his style right up with an lap. Well, first of all, you can ignore that drift out of the pit lane. It was cool, but I think it was more for the live stream than anything else. But look at him winding on the lock to feel the front end. That's before he's even on the track. And drivers do this to just gain a bit of confidence. But the thing to notice is that once the car is warm is that it has quite a lot of oversteer. And this was how he ran his car through his British and European F3 seasons. Now an oversteer balance has its benefits in that you have a bit more rotation in the car, giving you more turning and potentially more peak apex speed. But it can limit you on the brakes and on the way into the corner and sometimes a car with less traction on the exit. But this seems to be Lando adapting to the car because when he got to F1, he changed his driving style completely. Where the F3 car required a more ragged, aggressive driving style, the McLaren F1 car wanted you to be super smooth, driving the car into the corner with a little bit less oversteer, then pivoting the car mid-corner and trying to get a good exit. Look at this, these are his first laps in the 2022 McLaren. The first thing to notice is no aggressive tyre warming on the way out of the pit lane. The Pirelli tyres won't deal with that like the F4 tyres would. They are probably fresh out of the blankets and not needing to be aggressively warm. You can see though that this car is much more balanced. Rather than one axle sliding more than the other, the car is sliding evenly, perfectly balanced, which has been how Lando likes to drive his F1 cars. Early in Lando 
Fernando's F1 career, he mentioned adapting to the car, and he hasn't stopped doing that. For example, the 2022 car was particularly difficult to drive, and that was confirmed by how Daniel Ricciardo got on with that car. Many speculated that this car was built for Lando to suit his more recent, slightly rear-biased driving style, but actually, Lando disagreed. Particularly in that 2022 season, Lando mentioned that the car was very sensitive to some weird factors, mainly to do with the combined braking and turning phase of the corner, where the drivers are trail braking in. Sometimes it would be quicker to trail the brakes into the corner and pivot the car in the middle. Sometimes the car would want you to drive in a super smooth arc throughout the entire corner. Now, I've driven race cars that do this as well, and you have to get used to driving them in a certainly different way from corner to corner. But this sounds like it's at a completely different level. It could depend on the direction of the wind, the length of the corner, the compound of tire that you're on, and the surface of the circuit. Pretty much anything, to be honest. And Lando said that he had to work really hard to learn all of this and drive around the problem. It sounds like a real headache to me, and no wonder Daniel struggled. But we can all see the mental capacity Lando has, and his innate ability to drive the car intelligently. And for me, that's Lando's single biggest strength. Not the incredible feel or the intelligent racecraft, but his ability to adapt and to drag the most out of any car. And you can see that through his entire career. Lando has also been sim racing at a super high level, often with Max Verstappen as a teammate. Check this video out that we made about that just here. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.